Now the eyebrows are dancing. Is that the new thing? The, the, the eyebrow dance? I'm just gonna talk like that. I won't, I promise. This is the last time. Hello friends, this is Miro and welcome to another video. Today I wanted to talk to you about my Hoya Obovara that I'm pointing to, but I don't think you can really see it in the frame. And I wanted to show you this Hoya in bloom. But before we continue, couple of words from the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that cover as many skills as you could possibly imagine. It is a great place to explore your creativity. And if you're interested in learning something new, well, there's probably a class for that on Skillshare. The great thing about Skillshare is that you can learn any place, anytime you want, whenever it fits your schedule. Most of the classes are under 60 minutes long, which you can pause and continue, learn at your own pace, making it a great tool for self-education. One of the courses I'm currently watching is YouTube Success, script, shoot, and edit by MKBHD. Marcus Brownlee is an American YouTuber best known for his technology-focused videos as well as his podcast. Since I'm currently focusing most of my time and energy on creating videos, I find classes like this one extremely helpful. Another fantastic class I'm taking is Storytelling Through Film, How to Create Engaging Videos for YouTube by Thomas Dyer. Talking head videos, despite how easy they seem, can become a great challenge, and I have always wanted to learn more about proper storytelling techniques so I could apply them in my own content as well. There are no ads and new classes are added all the time. Since Skillshare is the sponsor of this video, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So you can explore your creativity as well. Back to the video! I did not learn how to dance on Skillshare. <laughs> Hoya Obavara is native to the islands of Maluku and Sulawesi in Indonesia, to Thailand and Vietnam. It is a very, very popular Hoya. Quite common, I would say, in the trade. There are several different variations on the same theme, but we will talk about those a bit later. It was described in 1844 by a French botanist, and I did learn how to pronounce his name. Hold on. Joseph du... 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 We learned this, Miro! Je ne parle français. It was described in 1844 by a French botanist, Joseph Duquesne. Got it right this time. Let's pretend we did that on the first take. The Hoya that I have here is Hoya obovata variegated. We will put the variegated in parentheses. Remember, it's not part of the name. It is a lovely Hoya. This is some new growth for you with quite a lot of variegation. I do have to admit that the old growth is not so spectacular. It's more splashy than variegated. Some of the leaves absolutely have no visible variegation, if you ask me. This one does. And some of the older leaves on the bottom that it arrived with. This Hoya was cut back, I would say, a couple of times before this video. It had another vine starting here. Are we gonna break this leaf? Is it really what we're gonna do, Miro? It had another vine here, and I would say it was probably as long as this one. And I cut it in a couple of cuttings because, honestly, I needed to sell some cuttings so I can buy some Hoyas for myself. And I just never really thought about growing this to be a big plant. In the beginning, it was not one of my favorite Hoyas. The stem is quite thick. It's very unwieldy. It's difficult to trellis, in my opinion. Maybe it will be easier with this new growth, but... I don't think it will. I'm already having a difficult time angling it. But I do now love the new variegated leaves. Another part is I didn't really like that I purchased the variegated version. What was shown in the photos is not what arrived. This one was actually the most variegated. I ordered three, two for my friends. They were not variegated. There was absolutely no variegation. But an interesting thing there is that my friend, who got variegated one that wasn't variegated almost at all, it pushed out a new vine that was fully variegated. Now he has a part that is not variegated and a nice, very, very variegated vine that grew really fast. Mine was not so quick to grow, it was much slower. It did receive a good amount of light, but still it was slower to grow. However, mine, I do believe, is the first one to bloom out of the three. The blooms are very nice and i do think now you will see some nectar there wasn't a nectar before but 
there definitely is some now. The flowers are reflexed. This is not my favorite shape of the flower in Hoyas. I don't like them so much when they're reflexed, but it's still a nice flower. It is a white-ish flower. It's not pure white. It's white mixed with just a tiny amount of pink and with a red corona. The scent on the first day wasn't quite pleasant. It reminded me a bit of chocolate, but it wasn't very nice. Now it has more of a rosy smell to it. I, I'm not sure if you would say it's exactly like a rose. It's very difficult. To different people, it may smell differently. And to me, it's not a very strong scent. I can tell you that. You're not going to be repelled by it. But it's not something that I can quite put my finger on. Definitely very, very faint. This Hoya is very easy to take care for. I transferred it to Semi Hydro after my Root Millibug treatment, and it's doing really well. No issues with the transfer whatsoever. The roots are growing really fast, and the plant is actually growing a bit faster now too. It used to be in my Mars Hydro tent with Mars Hydrolite, and I have to tell you, the leaves did get bleached. It wasn't under the light. It was off to the side, but it was still too strong. Now it is staying on top of that shelf right there. Right there. I think that's the spot. It stays there. There is a 36 watt LED light above and that window is northwest facing window. It has more window on the top, but it doesn't receive a huge amount of light natural. It has a lot of supplemental light and it bloomed really easily. I don't believe in stress blooming the plant. I don't think it bloomed because I transferred it to semi-hydro. I just think it was its time. It was ready to bloom. And from what I could read, Hoya obobata is one of the plants that is easier to get to bloom than others. It should bloom within one year and generally you will find a good sized plants out there. But there is non-variegated version and I did try my hand at that one two times and every time it would arrive rotten. It would arrive from the same place and the cutting was so rotten that I couldn't even root it. And that's why I actually decided to go for this one when I saw it. Initially, I didn't think I was gonna get the variegated version. I was going for non-variegated one and maybe with splash, but I ended up getting this one. It was available as a plant and I thought, why not? Nothing to lose and I'm very happy about it. I do find this plant very easy to root actually did root one recently. If I were to take cutting, I wouldn't take this one. I would wait for this to mature and then maybe I would take that as a cutting. If there wasn't this peduncle here with flowers, I would possibly cut here or one node up because this leaf is fully developed. You want to have at least one fully developed leaf and it's fine that this one isn't completely developed, but you at least want one. Don't cut if the leaves are not hard enough because they are very, very likely to drop. Now this plant is in semi-hydro and I just basically check to see when the water levels are low. It is in this double pot. This is a self-watering cash pot, I guess. It's dripping on me. You can kind of see this is where the level of water is. It is about one third. I'm not very careful to be one third. It can be sometimes less, usually not more because I'm stingy in water. But it was previously in bark and moss and it did really, really well in bark and moss. Hoyas typically tend to do well with bark and moss. They need moisture. If you don't water them, the roots will die back, as I said many, many times before. In order for your Hoya to grow well, you definitely need to keep it hydrated. I do think it's one of the biggest myths that you should never water your Hoya. Typically, you can expect to pay anywhere from 10 to 60 euros in Europe for Hoya obovata, depending on what you want. You have just normal Hoya obovata, you have the variegated one, the one with outer variegation. I saw there was one they call Picta. I'm not sure if it's a cultivar. I call mine Hoya obovata inner variegated. I think descriptors are completely fine. There are Hoya obovatas out there with inner variegation and with a lot of splash. And those are typically the most expensive ones. I do think those are about 60 euros or so. In fact, Adam, not dude, has one and it's absolutely gorgeous if you follow him on Instagram. 
at not dude you can see his Hoya Obobata with variegation. That's the one that I would have preferred. Honestly, I wouldn't get all the possible varieties. I think having one is just fine. I think it's a nice Hoya to have if you're a beginner. It's very easy to grow. It grows reasonably fast. Again, I think it depends if you get non-variegated or variegated one, but even the variegated one grows reasonably fast. I did not have any issues with it never had mealybugs except maybe root mealybugs but that's the topic from another video in general who is in my experience have been very resilient to thrips yes they do get occasional mealybug here and there and some spider mites but really i do think they're very very resilient you don't really need any special conditions in your home to take care for Hoya obovata. It can grow with normal humidity, and if you don't have abundance of light, just getting a regular LED light that is around 30 watts will do really well for it. In terms of fertilizer, I use Rain Mix Fertilizer. It is fertilizer for orchids. I measure the fertilizer with my TDS meter. I usually go for around 300 ppm and it depends on the starting point of my water. If I use rainwater, I will go to 300. If I use distilled water, I may go lower because distilled water has lower starting value. Now, you don't have to use rainwater or distilled water, but if you're growing it in semi-hydro, and if your tap water is filled with minerals, you probably will need to use one of those two options or reverse osmosis if you have that. But in general, I don't think Hoya obovata is very picky. If you cannot find something like rain mix, I would use any type of orchid fertilizer that is good quality. You want to make sure that it's a good quality fertilizer anyways, not just because it's a picky or not picky plant. In general, higher quality fertilizers are a good idea if you want to get the best worth for your money. And that is all about the variegated Hoya Obovata. I lost my train of thought there. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this Hoya. Do you like it? Do you have it? If not, would you consider getting it? And has it bloomed for you or not? Let me know what do you think the flowers smell like if you have one. If not, get it. If you don't have Hoya Obovata, I think you will not regret it if you can find one that is reasonably priced very easy to grow and to bloom so i don't think you will have any issues with that i honestly think it is worth having i'm not very big fan of variegated plants or variegated hoyas and i know that hoya obovata is not a prized plant but i think we also all need those reliable plants that you know that will bloom that you know when you see your other hoyas not doing so well you can look at this and say well at least they did something well Mine is less than a year old. I think it's starting to grow more prolifically now. And I do hope we get more of these variegated leaves. And they're bigger too. All these hoys are starting to put out bigger leaves. Where are you gonna go? Where are you gonna go? Don't look at me like that. It's time for you to move out. Don't. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you liked this Hoya, give it a thumbs up. Basically, thumb, thumb it. <laughs> Don't know it. I hope you're all having a wonderful week and I will see you soon. Bye! Today I wanted to talk with you about Hoya Obovata and to show you my hobo... Hobo? Today I wanted to talk with you about my Hoya Obovata and to show you my hobo... I would like to take some time to thank my patrons. A big shout out to my special tier, Danube Daniels and Spinach Geek. Thank you so much for your support. You are very generous. Also, a massive shout out to my $5 patrons. Double the shout out for Elena Coddington, my one anonymous patron, Betsy Begonia, Bonnie Harris, Dinsla, Hoyas and Whatnots, Kelsey Jager, Kristen Sherwood, Mars B, Mary, Melissa Walker, Nicole Ferranti, Nerdy Kathy, Tanya, Tom Ibbotson, Vicky Dingler, and Zlokovny Pony. Also, a big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Becca Panyard, Brianna Phillips, Catherine G, Jerry's Garden, Kara Cactus, Lisa Helling, Morgan Kennedy, Nikki, and Ringlov. 
and a thank you to my $1 patrons, Caroline and Jacinta. Thank you all so much for your support. You are marvelous. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you loved seeing my Hoya Obavata in bloom. And do let me know what is your favorite Hoya bloom out of the ones that bloomed for you so far. I think my favorite one is my Hoya Finlay Sony. Yeah, that one finally bloomed. It took it some time to get there, but we have arrived. I will see you soon in a less intense angle, and until then, stay safe. Bye!